101 basics. I'm just going to highlight what you need to know. Um, uh, first point is what I call CPI, construction, psychology, interpretation. These are the three things that you will need to know. So for the webinar that you attend in the next few weeks, the three-hour webinar, which I do exclusively for FX Street, you really need to know the stuff that I'm about to show to you, just so it, you can really leverage the, the, the training ideas which I show you um, afterwards. Then I'm going to give you a kind of a, a secret tip to understanding all the various candlestick patterns out there. This is one of the things that took me years to understand, but when I did understand it, it really helped a lot in my trading strategy. So that's candle groups. And then finally, I'm going to make a point on the importance of trends. Okay, so the first thing, just a quick kind of snapshot on candlesticks, a real-time snapshot. Um, on the left of your screen, you're going to see a real-time market move. The market opens, prices rise, um, and you can see the color of the candlestick. And this example is white. The close is above the open. So the close is higher than the open. The market has risen. So if you can think of euro dollar maybe trading at 140, pushing up to 150, and it closes at 150. It's been a positive price move in, in, in the market. The color tends to be white. You can choose any other color that you want. Classically, it's white for up moves. The, true, uh, the, the same is true, but inversely, on the way down, the market opens, pushes down, and then closes beneath the open. So here you can think of um, crude oil, which has been negative uh, recently, maybe opening at uh, $120, pushing down to $100, down uh, X dollars, and so the move is down, the close is beneath the open. The color is black. Everyone fine with this? Just for some of you who may be kind of new to this, I want to make sure that everyone's on the same lay, uh, level playing field. I want to make sure everyone's on the same ground. Now, the names of this price move, open, close, whether it's positive or negative, is real body. So the Japanese uh, strategists and traders many centuries ago, when they actually... Um, decided what was the most important price movement in the market, they decided that the difference between the open and the close, a market opening and a market closing, was actually the most important price activity in the market. Um, they actually said more than that. They said it was the essence of market psychology. So to understand the market's real psychology, the direction of the market, you really need to know uh, where the market opened and where it closed. This is, in essence, the market's commitment to a price point in the, in, in, in the market. So think of the difference between the open and the close, a market commitment, or the essence of price psychology, market psychology. Now there's a, there's a flip side to that. The other side of this coin is um, the extremes of the session. So the real body shows you where the market opened, where it closed, the difference between the two, but the extremes of the trading session, the high or the low, is also, is, is also important. Now, in Japanese symbology and, and, and kind of um, spiritual understanding, they allude to a lot of these um, yin-yang meaning, so positive and negative. And think of the, the yin part of, of that combination as the real body in the market, the uh, essence of psychology. The yang part of that, um, of that combination is the shadow in the market. So the two things you need to keep in mind when you're looking at candlesticks, one, real body, two, the shadow. Real body shows you where the market has committed itself. Shadow shows you where the market was, but isn't anymore. Now, if you're not entirely sure on what I've been saying now, don't worry, I've got a few examples coming up in the next few moments that really kind of clarify what I'm saying. But just understand two buzzwords. Real body, shadow. Real body, shadow. Real body it shows you the difference in the open and the close. The shadow shows you the extreme points in the market. Is that okay for everyone? Most of you already know this, but just for some of you who might not know this, I just want to make it very clear to some beginners out there. Okay, that's just a real-time example. Now I'm going to quickly show you the psychology. Um, let's say the market opens, pushes down, rises, and then follows this price path during the day, and then breaks support. These are the emotions that, that go through us uh, during the day, greed, fear, hope. Uh, but during that time, what you get is a lot more if you actually trace out the candlestick. Now, if you just focus on where the mouse is at the moment, I'm highlighting the opening price. This is where we open. This is where we close. This is the high of the, of the trading range, and this is the low of the trading range. Everyone with me? So I'm just basically tracing out an intraday or intra-week uh, 
or intra-month price activity. That's what I'm showing. Down, up, down, up, and then finally down, uh, breaking down lower with the emotion. Now, the opening price and the closing price allow us to highlight the real body, the real market commitment, which has been down. The high of the range and the low of the range allow us to highlight, and some of you can probably say this without me saying, the shadows. And so this is just a real-time example just showing you how all of this price information during a day, week, or month is crystallized in a candlestick, one single candlestick um, uh, example or, or even a pattern. So just keep that in mind. Although it's a very simple example, I found that whenever I show this to people, um, it really helps explain the importance of candlesticks, not just one or two or three patterns, it actually unlocks a lot of really important, valuable information that takes place during the day. You can understand all of this price action in just one single candlestick. Now, the opposite is true when you're looking at uh, shadows. This is an example of different types of shadows in the market, um, and I've, I've specifically put in shadows which are a little unorthodox, just to kind of make sure that this is as you know, educational as 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 as, uh, as educational as, as as possible for you guys. I want to make sure that each of you are learning something new and useful. So shadows are not just you know extremes of the day. Uh, it, shadows show you who's losing control. So that example, that boxing example, what I showed you of Muhammad Ali and and uh, Frazier. Um, equally, that the other question you can ask, not just who's in control, but who's losing control. And one of the ways that you can answer that question, the other side of the question is by looking at the shadows, the, the, the extremes of the session, where the market was, but isn't anymore. Another description of, of, of that is, I've just basically said, shadows show you momentum which has decreased. Now, I, I tend to kind of speak in terms of different definitions just to make sure you know, that each of you have different definitions that you might relate to. But to give you a practical example, the first candlestick is a bearish long upper shadow. So it's a positive day. You can see it's a white candle. The market opened, and then it pushed higher and closed above the open. So let's say euro dollar opened at 150, uh, closed at 150, but it made a high at 160. I'm obviously speaking hypothetically here. I don't believe euro dollar is going to move to 160. Um, but it made a high at 160 hypothetically, and then closed down at 150. So you should be thinking two things here. One, the market was strong, but two, it then lost some of that strength. So the buyers were in control, but at the end of the session, they started to lose control. So it is a bullish candlestick, classically, but you should really think twice when you see something like this because the shadow is a leading signal to strength which is decreased. So buyers that were in control but are now losing some control, and most importantly, they're losing control right at the end of the session, which can sometimes be the be-all and end-all. And it doesn't matter if it's early session or end of session. If the buyers or the sellers lose control, they lose control. It is a dynamic game. Now, the second example shows you the same thing, but in a market context. So here we have a market trending up. Uh, the market then hits a key level, maybe a psychological level, uh, gold, 1600 oil, uh, let's say $120. Any psychological key resistance level you can think of in your mind um, and here you have a market which w wasn't an uptrend, that's the green arrows, but then um, it makes uh, further highs, but then as it makes the highs, the shadows then show you that the buyers are losing control. So this is bearish long upper shadow showing you decreasing rallying strength. Last but not least is the exact opposite, and this is what we call a bullish long lower shadow. So. Most of you uh, will look at this bearish black candle, these two bearish black candles, and say to me, this is negative price action. And you're exactly right. But you're also wrong at the same time. Because although the sellers are actually in control during both of these sessions, the fact that the market pushes up at the end of the session, so remember the market opened here, sorry, the market opened here and closed here, but then it lost this much price action. It lost this much price action. So this is showing you that sellers are, have lost some control, almost 50% control, almost 50% control, during that trading session. 